Good morning, everybody. No music today. Last week, uh, there was a little bit of confusion when I had the music on. A lot of people thought it was broken, so we didn't have music today. Sorry about that. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about these bad times that we're going through. And uh, I want you all to know that, again, that I'm praying for all of you, and our church is praying for you. All the leaders are praying for you. And uh, But you know what? In all these bad times right now, we still have church. We still have each other. And all of us should be praying. So, But I do want to talk to you a little bit about these bad times that are at right now. And these are bad times. This is probably something that's going to go down in history. And any time tragedy hits us, like we've been dealing with in this last month, we start searching for answers. And so many people calling, asking, why? Why could God let this happen? Um, how could he let this happen? But more importantly, we need to ask this question, how do we get through it? How do we get through it? It's a good question, right? How do we get through this time of craziness? Because right now it is craziness. We need to turn to God's unfailing word. His Bible, he gave us his word so we didn't have to go crazy. He gave us his word so we didn't have to worry. He gave us his word for the strength that we need. Amen? But um, I want you to know that um, there's also help and there's hope in God's word. The Bible has every answer for every problem that we could ever have. It has the answer for worrying. It has the answer for a broken heart. It has the answer for fear. And it has the answer for strength. The Bible has it all. God gave it to us for a reason. It's a, it's a, it's a gift. It's a gift that he's given us. And so many of us throw it aside. We need to pick it up, especially right now. We're locked down. Hey, pick up your Bible. You know, I remember so many times I would tell myself, Oh, sometimes I wish I was back in jail so I can pick up a Bible and read and nothing would distract me. Well, now's a good time for all of us to get in God's Word. We don't have to be distracted. We can lock ourselves up in a room and just start reading. And we know what we need? We need to get closer to Him right now. That's the bottom line. You know, and I kind of want to lift up a, a friend of mine. She's a doctor and uh, she's at Mills and she's going through a lot of stuff right now. You know, they're running out of equipment. They're running out of Shields are running out of mask N95 masks. They're using they're using ones that are used, which is terrible. They're right there on the front lines, and we need to be praying for our doctors and nurses that are out there trying to uh, to get a hold of the situation. But we too can get a hold of the situation if we are praying and if we are reaching out to God because He's the one. He's the mighty healer. He's the one that can take care of all these problems, and we have to have faith in that. I've learned that there's two types of life, uh, two types of uh, life that we talk about in the Bible. The one is eternal life. This is hope for believers in Jesus Christ. This will be uh, a time when pain, fear, heartache, and frustration will come to an end. You see, because when we go, we know this. All this stuff doesn't matter. When we leave this planet, when we leave this earth, we know where we're going. We're going to be with God for eternity. Praise God. There'll be no more tears. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more death. But there's also another kind of life. It's everyday life, earthly life. I call it everyday life. That's what I want to talk about today because that's the life we need help with right now at this very moment. Some people are losing faith. Some people are not believing. We need to talk about that today. We need God to help us through our everyday life, especially in these hard times when it seems like there's no hope. But God is the one who gives us hope. We have hope in Jesus Christ. So many don't know him. So many don't have that hope. And you know, that's one thing we should be doing right now, sharing the gospel, sharing the gospel with friends and neighbors that we were probably too afraid to talk to before because we were afraid of the response. Well, guess what? Don't be ashamed. Jesus says, don't be ashamed of me, right? Or I'll be ashamed of you before the heaven, my heavenly father. But there's so many scriptures that deal with this topic. But Jesus told his disciples and tells us that there will be difficult days ahead. That's what he says. Look at Matthew 24. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciple came to him and said, uh, and called to his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked. I tell you the truth. Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you, for many, many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. 
you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to the, and persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. And at that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm in the end will be saved. There will be hard times in this life, Jesus said. I have told you so you can have peace in me. That's what Jesus said. We can have peace in him. And that's what I have, and that's what most of my family in Christ has, I'm sure. But so his, pers his purpose wasn't to scare us, but to prepare us. Think about that. Scare us or to prepare us? He, he wanted to prepare us. He wanted to prepare us for those times. And regardless of how devastating the days will be, Jesus can give us healing, hope, and peace to our souls. We all have faced or will face hard times in our lives. Imagine what our elders have dealt with in the past. Famine and all the same things and disease. And they got through it. And they're here to tell us about it. We're going to be the same. We're going to be able to tell our children and our grandchildren what happened here in these times. But we can also tell them about Jesus who rescued us in these times. Amen. Devastating times, but they made it through. We are facing a big one right now, but the Word of God has a lot to say that can help us to prepare us for the bad times. Now let me say this. I'm not saying that we live in fear of our problems or that we step back and wait for them to come, but that when they do come, and they will, and they are, that we are already have a foundation of beliefs that will help us to survive those times. And God gives us those beliefs in his precious word. So how can we ready ourselves for these bad times? Let me give you a few things what we can do. And it doesn't mean it's going to be easy. It doesn't mean that it's going to be automatic. But first, we need to realize what we're told. The Bible talks about difficulties coming in different ways, levels, and degrees. The Bible doesn't deny bad times. Even Jesus spoke very openly about the bad things that would be a part of our earthly lives. He said, in the world you shall have trouble. Jesus himself said that. It's very clear to me that he's, he's trying to prepare us for the possibility of some trouble. He doesn't say that things will not hurt us or wound us or injure us. He doesn't promise that our lives will be perfect and painless like most think that they, uh, that they'll, that'll happen once they give their life to Jesus. Well, once we give our lives to Jesus, we're, everything's going to be great. Everything's going to be perfect. No, he doesn't say that. He says we will suffer. There will be times of suffering. Yet for some reason, we never expect bad things to happen, especially when we first give our lives to Jesus. And I still remember a, a pastor at the church telling me, and I was, I was so happy when I gave my life to Jesus. I got my wife back. All these good things started happening, and the drugs were gone, and the drinking was gone. And all of a sudden, the attacks came. And when the attacks came, I was running for help, and this pastor said, oh, the honeymoon's over, isn't it? And I said, yeah, I guess so. So there will be bad times. We have to expect that. Not that we're, 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 we're to live in fear, but we're not to live in deception either. Don't deceive yourself into thinking that you won't have trouble in this life, because we will. It will come to all of us. We have gotten the message. And remember this, the first part of the word of message is mess. It is mess. And the first part of testimony is test. We're going to be going through some mess to get the testimony. So listen, Ecclesiastes 3 says that there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. And it goes on to say that life consists of both negatives and positives. Both pleasant and unpleasant things will happen. It lets us know that things in life will shift from calmness to calamity and then back again. Life is a, like a revolving door. Keep walking and you'll be in and out of pain, in and out of peace, sorrow, and celebration. We were fine a little over a month ago, living normal lives. At least some of us were living normal lives. And now things are turning into chaos. Just go to the grocery store and see everything. People are fighting for eggs. People are fighting for toilet paper. We all know that one. It's all over the internet. Um, it's chaos. People are turning against one another, just like Jesus said it would. Does this mean it's the end times? I have no idea. No one knows the day, the time, or the hour. But it sure sounds like it. People turning against one another. But we should live our lives like it could be over. That's how we should live our lives. 
We should live every day like it's going to be the last day. How do we do that? By starting to love God and love one another could be the cure. Trouble will come. It's a fact. But we must also recognize a great truth. Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says there's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. What exactly is God telling us here? He's telling us that there's going to be times of trouble and there's going to be times of victory. That's the bottom line. When we're in tough times, we think we're, we're going to be stuck there. We think that pain will never end. It'll never be over. Faith is now out of the equation. We have to be praying in faith. You know, I sent a prayer out a few days back or maybe a week ago. I can't even remember now because the days are all over the place. Um, and I, had, I wanted everybody to pray together at 10 o'clock. And the reason I'm doing that is because I believe, because I was told by, by Pastor Donald years ago that our church was held together by prayer. And I think there's so much power in the prayer in, in unity of every one of us coming together at a certain time and coming to God and showing our faith, our faith in him, knowing that he's going to take care of this problem for us. So that's what we need to be doing. We need to, to, to pray in faith and not to be doubting that this is not going to end. You know, the book of James says, because those who doubt shouldn't believe they will receive anything. They are tossed back and forth like the waves of the sea. Doesn't that sound kind of like us sometimes? Oh, Lord, yes, you're going to take this away. And half an hour later, you're going, this is never going to end. We don't want to be like that. We want to have true faith, trust, and believe that God will handle this for us. That's what we believe. And for those of you who don't know God, how can you have faith? How can you have belief? How can you have trust? You don't have it because you don't have Jesus. This is a very uh, touching thing for me because I know so many out there that are friends of mine and family that probably don't know Jesus directly and personally. <clears throat> and I'm hoping and I'm praying that this time will get bring everybody closer to Jesus, that they will get on their knees now and give their life to Jesus instead of getting on their knees later because in the Bible says every knee will bow even if you don't know Jesus to be judged. So I'm really praying for my family and friends and I'm praying for all of you out there if you don't know Christ. Look at I'm a prime example of what he did in my life. So I was a dirtbag. I was a low life. I came in the church a drunk, a drug addict, and uh, God changed my life. And he could change yours. Don't be tossed back and forth. The devil's a liar. Don't let him lie in your ear. And don't let him tell you that this is the end and, and we lost. No, because we have the victory in Jesus Christ. Amen? Now understand this. There's nothing wrong with weeping, as you can see. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with mourning. The Bible says that there's a time for it. We all go through things that set us back and knock the wind out of us or even discourage us. And, and here's, there's nothing wrong with those reactions. The problem is we can tend to drag it out. Some of us just keep dragging it out. You need to put a stop to it. You need to get on your knees in faith and come to God in prayer. And I have news for you. He already knows what you're going to pray about. He knows what you're going to say before you even open your mouth. But he wants to hear you say it. He wants to see your faith. He wants to see your trust in him. But, and listen to this. The Bible also says that weeping will end. Mourning will end. Those times will end and joy will come again. The pain will pass. The sorrow will decrease and life will get better. Jesus says, your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Doesn't that sound wonderful, especially right now, to know the promise that we have that Jesus says, our sorrow, because that's what we're living in right now, our sorrow shall be turned into joy. He will turn your frown upside down. Now, Jesus did say in the world you will have trouble, but be of good cheer. So are you of good cheer, those of you who know Jesus? Are you in your homes? Are you worshiping still? Are you still taking care of business? Are you taking, you know, spend time with your family. What a great time. Most people say they don't have time because they have to work and overtime and everything else. Well, here's your chance. Get with your family. Pray together. Come together. Read God's word. This is the perfect time for it. Yes, go get some air, but be careful. Amen. Um, but he says, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Only he can do that. You know, the world, right? We have the prince, uh, the, the devil, who is the prince of the earth. He is the prince of the air, of the world. But he says, I have overcome the world. He's telling you that he's, he won already. He, he beat the devil. He beat the devil on the cross when he took all of our sins for those of us who have surrendered our lives to him. 
Now, what does he mean by that? It means he knows that we're going to go through trouble, but it also means he was going to lead us into victory. He has plans and purposes, and they don't include continuous pain and problems. We can have peace knowing that he knows what we're, gonna, what we're going through and that he knows to, how to get us through it. You have to remember, and as you're going through it, we need to rely and trust on God. This is probably the hardest thing for some people because it forces us to trust and believe in something that is contrary to what we feel and what we see and what seems to be apparent reality. We don't see God. Everything's invisible. Visible. But he said, blessed are those that, that have seen. Blessed are those that have seen and believed. But more blessed are those that have not seen and believed. That's us who are living today in this world. We don't see Jesus walking around but he's here. God is around us. His Holy Spirit is over us. He's here right now as I'm preaching this word, the Holy Spirit, I feel him inside of me. Amen. And you can feel him too. But we need to trust God and that he is all wise, all knowing, and that he knows when to let what come into our lives. That's not easy, but I can tell you that if you don't do that, unless you make up your mind and your heart to trust God, his judgment, his timing, and his sovereignty, you will lose your sanity in the midst of your sorrow. You have to learn, lean, you have to lean hard on him. Proverbs 3, 5 says to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do you know what that means? Trust in the Lord with all your heart and not lean on your own understanding? That means you have to give him 100% of your heart. Don't give him 5% or 10% or 1%. Give him 100% of your heart and lean not on your own understanding because most of you like me tried leaning on our own understanding and didn't get us anything but trouble. Some things you will never figure out. In fact, it's a waste of time, energy, and effort to try to do so. There are just some things you will never get through unless you trust God. You have to rely on him, trust him, and depend on him. You have to trust him even though you can't touch him. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. In him, not us. And when you trust God like that, in that measure, it prepares you to receive healing in time. Now listen, everyone. Time alone doesn't heal. It doesn't correct problems, nor does it fix problems. Time itself doesn't give you the healing. The healing comes in time to the heart that trusts in God Almighty. Do you hear that? Trusting in God Almighty will give you healing. Do you know what that means? It means it's simple. It's trust. Trust that heals. Trust and faith that heals. Trusting God has a way of putting our pain and problems into perspective and helps bring you into a place where you are more open to healing. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 4, it says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. You see, we, may sit in, we might be sitting here at home and we're mourning and we're crying and we're upset, but we shall be comforted for those who know Jesus Christ. That comes from Jesus himself. Those are his words. It's a statement that should be an inspiration to us from our Savior. He will comfort us in these bad times. In time, as you learn to trust God, the healing begins to flow in your heart as the God of all comfort applies his healing comfort to every sensitive area of your soul. You can go to bed and you can sleep again. You can wake up and be in joy again for another day of life because every day of life is a gift. It's a gift from God himself. But we need to realize and we're told to recognize a, a, a great truth. Rely on God and trust and receive healing in time as we, as we trust God more. This will help us ready ourselves for the bad times. Ready ourselves for the bad times. Because right now these are the bad times. Are you ready? Are you ready? In order to really believe the scriptures that the Bible gives us about perfect peace and how to trust God completely, you need faith. Faith. Small word. Faith. But it's huge to God. It's huge to God. You need faith. Faith that God is real and listening. Faith that he loves you and wants to take care of you. Faith that he hears you when you cry out to him during those moments of fear. Faith when you're losing your jobs. Faith when you come to him because maybe you have a cough and you're starting to get nervous. You need to have faith in God. God is omnipresent which means that God is capable of being everywhere at the same time. It means his divine presence encompasses the whole universe. There's no place where God, where he's not. He's everywhere. He can be with any of us at any time, all at once. That's the God we need to, to come to right now in these bad times. I could be praying to God here today. You could be praying to God today. And guess what? He's with each and every one of us. We're never alone. Never alone. 
Maybe you have this fear right now that you can't control. Maybe you're watching all the crazy things going on right now and you're thinking there's no hope. Well, I'm here to tell you that there's hope. Hope in the name of Jesus Christ. Just a note to all of you. Some of you might feel paralyzed right now. You might be sitting there at home going, what do I do now? I used to go to the church. I used to go to Bible study. I used to serve in ministries. I used to help with the children. I used to help with the breakfast. I used to help in the, in the audio video department. But I want you to know that you don't need to be paralyzed. You might, you know, it's, it's right now church is closed. It is. But it doesn't have to stop here. You can still serve God in other ways, helping others around you. Maybe you could be sharing the gospel with your neighbor who you never talked to. Maybe there's people out there that you know that need to know Jesus Christ. Maybe you know somebody, an old person living across the street that you've never talked to. Maybe she needs groceries. Maybe she needs some toilet paper, whatever it is. You can still serve God in other ways, just helping all those around you. You know, it's funny as I have a neighbor who lives behind me. And we don't talk much. I've talked to them before, but we really don't talk much. And I've been here about 16 years. And it was funny. I went out on my deck yesterday, and I hear this lady, hi. And then she said, uh, what is your name again? And, and, I, and I told her my name, and we had a little conversation. See, maybe this is what God is doing. Maybe he's bringing us all close again. And not just Christians, all of us, neighbors. I don't know if she knows Christ, but I know this. I said, God wants us to, to, to reach out right now. That's what he wants us to do. You know, some of you are even asking me, you know, should I, be, should I still be tithing? The church is closed. Of course we still tithe. We don't stop tithing because God, we have to do what God says. We don't all of a sudden go, okay, God doesn't say it anymore because the church doors are closed. We're still in church. You're in church right now. You know, and I'm sure that some of you are in a bad way right now. Some of you are being laid off. Some of you are having problems right now, and that's okay. We understand. But some of you have been blessed in abundance over the years, and some of you are comfortable right now. And maybe you can give a little more, and that would be great. Because you know why? We can use those funds to help those that are hurting, to help those that are being laid off, to help those that need groceries, to help those just with anything that we can, but we cannot do it without you. And this could be your ministry. This could be your ministry while you're at home. And just to know, there'll be a, 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 I want to let you all know something. I'm taking a quick break here. There's going to be a message with Pastor Layton, including worship service this morning on Church of the Highlands Facebook page. Not sure what time, but I know it's going to be on there. So we get a full service, just like you were at church. You're going to have Pastor Layton lead in a message, and we're going to have the worship team. And I'm pretty sure Joshua is going to be up there, and he's going to be praying, and he's going to be yelling out. And, and you know what's really cool? And it's something I didn't mention before, and I want to mention it now. I got my brother Aaron here right now. He's the one running this camera. And I'm so thankful for him that he would get out of his bed early in the morning. Actually, this morning I woke him up and I woke up his family. I'm sorry because I get a little anxious. And, uh, but he's been helping me with these, these camera things and all this stuff because I'm not a tech, technology guy. I'm not an expert by far. You know, I can barely run the computer. But uh, I want to thank him today. You know, Aaron, thank you. No worries, brother. Do it for you and do it for God. Amen. He's a great brother. Um, but getting back to Jesus, if you don't know him, you can today. That's what's so great about Jesus. You can come to him at any time as long as you have breath. And if you haven't noticed, this is probably a good time right now. So those of you who are worrying out there and those of you who are going crazy and those of you who are in fear and anxiety, come to Jesus right now and get on your knees. Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. The Lord himself and the Lord alone is enough for strength and salvation. Friends, I truly believe after all this is over, and it will be over, God will have the glory. He loves us all. How do I know he loves us all? The greatest expression of God's love is shown to us in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Did you hear that? He, laid, he loved us so much he, he put his son on a cross for us. He let his son go through torturing for us and to take our sins and nail them on that cross. We need to come to the cross, cross and then we can have eternal life. You see, we're limited here. This life is limited. It's inevitable. We're all going to die. But guess what? We have eternal life with God. Remember where there's no tears, no more pain, no more sorrow. I can't wait. But in Romans 5, 8, it gives us the same message. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For those of you who are sitting there listening to this message, who have had a rough life like me and went through crazy times, maybe went to jail, uh, maybe you hurt somebody, maybe you did some really bad things, 
But it says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He still gives you the opportunity. No sin so small or so large or how many. He still died for you, and you can have eternal life with him just like us. So give your life to Jesus. God wants us all in heaven. He made the way possible by having his son Jesus die on that cross and pay that price. That's love, and love forgives. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. All unrighteousness. Anything that you're hanging on to, he forgives us for all unrighteousness. Listen, this has to be one of the worst things we've ever had to face. But you need to know this, that one day we will have to come before our creator, God. And there will be a day of judgment. That's what we need to be concerned about. We all have to, we all have to one day leave this earth. Excuse me. But my question is this, do you know where you're going to go afterwards? Folks, when you leave this place, because you will leave this place, this is only temporary. Everything that you're hanging on to, uh, your house, your cars, and all these things that you might be losing at this very minute, doesn't mean a thing. Do you know where you're going to go when your eyes shut for the last time and you take your last breath? I know where I'm going. I know where my wife's going. I know where my mom's going. I know where my dad's already at. I know where my pastor Don's at right now. Because we have faith in Jesus Christ. We trust Jesus. We believe in Jesus. And we have surrendered our lives to Jesus. So today I would like to ask you, please, look, don't stop doing God's work. Just because they say we have to stay in our home. They say you can take a walk. Walk to a neighbor. Ask if they need a little bit of help. We can still do work for Jesus. I want to ask you all right now, this is kind of an altar call. I want to ask you all if you want to accept Christ today, as I did. And you can have the peace of all understanding that I have. I know that when I leave this place, it doesn't matter. You know, I live my life pretty crazy, and I didn't care if I died or not. But today, it's a different feeling knowing that when I die, I'm going to be in a place that's going to be so beautiful. You can have this too. I want to ask you all today who don't know Jesus to follow this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I give my life to you today. I surrender my life to you today. I repent of all my sins, anything I've ever done from the time I've come out of the womb up until now. And I ask that you would forgive me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me for my sins. I believe that you rose up out of that grave, Lord. I believe that you rose out of that tomb and you beat death. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you've given me to surrender my life to you so I could be with you in heaven one day. Thank you, Lord. If you prayed this prayer with me today, you know Jesus Christ. You can get a hold of us through Church of the Highlands. Uh, website, or you can go through uh, Facebook Church of the Highlands if you want to get in contact with me and you want to talk a little bit more about your life in Christ. I'll be more than happy to answer you. I'm, I don't think I'll be able to travel everywhere today, but you can get a hold of me and I will call you or we can go through emails. Um, thank you all for being with me today. I want to thank, bless, bless you all and know that I'm praying for all of you and your families. I'm pleading the blood of Jesus right now over everyone in our church and everyone out of our church. And I ask you, dear Lord, to protect them all and to protect us all from ourselves, from our anxiousness, Lord. Thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.